presents an array of detailed information covering the whole gamut of EMSO, from electronic warfare to cyber warfare and information operations, to name just three. The EMSOpedia can be found at www.emsopedia.org, starting from today. The encyclopedia distills the knowledge of specialists both within and beyond Electronica, providing clear explanations for what can seem complex and daunting subjects. We're delighted to have some excellent speakers with us today, who will be telling us more about the Emsopedia, its importance, and the contribution that it will make. Ms. Domitila Benini, Electronica's Chief Executive Officer and Chief Operating Officer, and Chair of the subsidiary company, Cyphergate, will give us an overview of the project and the importance of the Emsopedia to the company. Brigadier General Giuseppe Scamba, Assistant Director of NATO's Joint Air Power Competence Center, will share his perspectives and personal views on electromagnetic support operations and how the Emsopedia can help us to understand these. He is also a contributor, writing the taxonomy entry on EMSO. Finally, Ms. Daniela Pistoia, Electronica's Corporate Chief Scientist and representative of the EMSO Scientific Committee, will give us a demonstration of the encyclopedia and explain the contribution experts can make to its growth. We will then have some opportunities for questions which you can send to us either via the WebEx portal during the conference or during the Q&A. So without further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Benini to introduce the Emsopedia. Ms. Benini, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tom, and good afternoon uh, to all of you. Uh, Really, I'm honored today to be here to introduce to you this new initiative that is very, very important for my company. Uh, this initiative is also a part of our celebration of the 70th anniversary of Electronica. Um, as maybe a lot of you know, Electronica was founded in 1951 by my great uncle, engineer Filippo Fratalocchi. He introduced Italy to, electro to electronic warfare to protect uh, naval, airborne and ground platform from electronic magnetic threats like radar. In, uh, in this period, the Electronica grew from 25 employees to more than 1,000 all around the world. Over the years, uh, <clears throat> the solutions that uh, the Electronica solution are involved in uh, several European leading defense program from the Franco Italian uh, it frame and horizon warship to the Eurofighter Typhoon combat aircraft and NH-19 helicopters. Uh, trusted and supported by Italian armed forces, Electronica's product have uh, supplied over 3,000 platform of over 30 armed forces worldwide. In addition, the company developed his uh, Electronic Warfare Academy to provide world-class training. Uh, over these years, uh, our core business have been enriched by new competence and a more focused uh, value proposition through two subsidiaries, the Electronica GmbH, the fully owned German company that is a center of excellence in Homeland Security, and Cyphergate, uh, the company listed at the AIM, the, Ita uh, the Italian uh, um, uh, exchange, uh, from June 2020, uh, completely uh, focused on uh, cyber domain. And we can say that today, after 70 years uh, of this funding, Electronica is a global and integrated defense, uh, security, and cyber group. Uh, in these seven decades of experience, uh, of course, the company uh, always anticipate and counter the future threats. And we always invested in uh, research and development to maintain our market position and, uh, of course, to predict the future threats. This is why we are deeply involved in this the new evolution, the, the changing of electronic warfare in electro electromagnetic spectrum operation. This is the reason because uh, to, to celebrate our 70th birthday, uh, we wanted to combine all our knowledge to create this Emsopedia. This is our encyclopedia dedicated to EMSO. 
we also uh, want to share it uh, uh, with all the global defense community. Uh, this is a way of saying thank you to the help the company has received from, from many of its stakeholders, from the institutions, armed force, academia, and suppliers. Uh, as you said, the MCOpedia is unique. I think it's the only initiative using such a broad taxonomic structure and also clarifies the several interconnection between the EMSO's various topic. Uh, we, we create these uh, in, in, in the sense that we hope that this tool will be useful, not only for the armed forces, but also, as I said, for academia, for students, for also journalists. Uh, for example, many times young graduates come often to the, in the company uh, to do research for their thesis. And this has made us realize how important it is to share this knowledge to make the knowledge grow and to share with all of you. So we consider the MSOpedia uh, a starting point for the collective enrichment by community of experts who will improve and enrich the knowledge of MSO application, uh, not only for military, but also for civil field. Um, I must uh, underline that this project uh, is uh, it's a purely scientific approach. So there will never be any uh, economic or marketing or commercial uh, issue. Um, the initial release uh, that, is, that will be ready for, from today, it's about 100 definition. But of course, there is the possibility to expand it yet further. So before, uh, leaving the floor to Daniela to explain uh, much in details how the MSOpedia will work, I must thank a lot of people. So, first of all, the Italian Armed Force and Stato Maggiore Difesa for their collaboration and for your contribute that we are waiting as soon as possible. Then, of course, Brigadier General Sgamba and the JIPCC who wrote the general definition of ENSO in the, in the project. Uh, NATO Standardization Office, the Association of Old Crow, and in particular Nino Amoroso, uh, the, a lot of university that have collaborated with us for the project. Uh, of course, the scientific committee led by Daniela Pistoia, and uh, Professor Farina, Professor Vincentelli, Nino Amoroso, and Andrea Pompili. Uh, all the members of the editorial committee, but above all, Mr. Andrea De Martino and Mr. Massimo Nulli. Uh, of course, let me thank, above all, all our colleagues from uh, Electronica Rome, GmbH, and Cyphergate, who works intensively in the project. So later, Daniela Pistoia, Electronica Chief Scientist, will demonstrate the EMSO and explain all the characteristics and the possibility for, for all of you to participate in the project. So many thanks to the attendees. Thank you. It's an array of detailed information covering the whole gamut of EMSO, from electronic warfare to cyber warfare and information operations, to name just three. The EMSOpedia can be found at www.emsopedia.org starting from today. The encyclopedia distills the knowledge of specialists both within and beyond Electronica, providing clear explanations for what can seem complex and daunting subjects. We're delighted to have some excellent speakers with us today who will be telling us more about the Emsopedia, its importance and the contribution that it will make. Ms. Domitila Benini, Electronica's Chief Executive Officer and Chief Operating Officer and Chair of the subsidiary company Cyphergate will give us an overview of the project and the importance of the MSOpedia to the company. Brigadier General Giuseppe Scamba, Assistant Director of NATO's Joint Air Power Competence Center, will share his perspectives and personal views on electromagnetic support operations and how the MSOpedia can help us to understand these. He is also a contributor, writing the taxonomy entry on MSO. Finally, Ms. Daniela Pistoia, 
Electronica's corporate chief scientist and representative of the EMSO Scientific Committee, will give us a demonstration of the encyclopedia and explain the contribution experts can make to its growth. We will then have some opportunities for questions which you can send to us either via the WebEx portal during the conference or during the Q&A. So without further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Benini to introduce the Emsopedia. Ms. Benini, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tom, and good afternoon uh, to all of you. Uh, really, I'm honored today to be here to introduce to you this uh, new initiative that is very, very important for my company. Uh, this initiative is also a part of our celebration of the 70th anniversary of Electronica. Um, as maybe a lot of you know, Electronica was founded in 1951 by my great uncle, engineer Filippo Fratalocchi. He introduced Italy to, electro to electronic warfare to protect uh, naval, airborne and ground platform from electronic magnetic threats like radar. In, uh, in this period, the Electronica grew from 25 employees to more than 1,000 all around the world. Over the years, uh, <clears throat> the solutions that uh, the Electronica solution are involved in uh, several European leading defense program from the Franco Italian uh, Frame and Horizon warship to the Eurofighter Typhoon combat aircraft and NH 19 helicopters. Uh, trusted and supported by Italian armed forces, Electronica's product have supplied over 3,000 platforms of over 30 armed forces worldwide. In addition, the company developed his uh, Electronic Warfare Academy to provide world-class training. Uh, over these years, uh, our core business have been enriched by new competence and a more focused value proposition through two subsidiaries, the Electronica GmbH, the fully owned German company that is a center of excellence in Homeland Security, and Cyphergate, uh, the company listed at the AIM, the, Ita uh, the Italian uh, um, uh, exchange, uh, from June 2020, uh, completely uh, focus on uh, cyber domain. And uh, we can say that today, after 70 years uh, of this funding, Electronica is a global and integrated defense, uh, security and cyber group. Uh, in these seven decades of experience, uh, of course, the company uh, always anticipate and counter the future threats. And we always invested in uh, research and development to maintain our market position and, uh, of course, to predict the future threats. This is why we are deeply involved uh, in this the new evolution, the, the changing of electronic warfare in electro electromagnetic spectrum operation. This is the reason because uh, to, to celebrate our 70th birthday, uh, we wanted to combine all our knowledge to create this EMSOpedia. This is our encyclopedia dedicated to EMSO. We also uh, want to share it uh, uh, with all the global defense community. Uh, this is a way of saying thank you to the help the company has received from, from many of its stakeholders, from the institutions, armed force, academia, and suppliers. Uh, as you said, the Emsopedia is unique. I think it's the only initiative using such a broad taxonomic structure and also clarifies the several interconnection between the Emso's various topic. Uh, we we create these uh, uh, in 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 the sense that we hope that this tool will be useful not only for the armed forces but also as I said for academia for students for also journalists. Uh, for example, um, many times uh, young graduates uh, come often to the in the company uh, to do research for their thesis. And this has made us realize how important it is to share 
this knowledge, to make the knowledge grow and to share with all of you. So we consider the Emsopedia uh, a starting point for the collective enrichment by community of experts who will improve and enrich the knowledge of Emso application, uh, not only for military, but also for civil field. Um, I must uh, underline that this project uh, is uh, it's a purely scientific approach, so there will never be any uh, economic or marketing or commercial uh, issue. Um, the initial release uh, that is that will be ready for from today, it's about 100 definition, but of course, there is the possibility to expand it yet further. So before. Uh, leaving the floor to Daniela to explain uh, much in details how the Emsopedia will work, I must thank a lot of people. So, first of all, the Italian Armed Force and Stato Maggiore Difesa for their collaboration and for your contribute that we are waiting as soon as possible. Then, of course, Brigadier General Sgamba and the JIPCC who wrote the general definition of ENSO in the, in the project. Uh, NATO Standardization Office, the Association of Old Crow, and in particular Nino Amoroso, uh, the, a lot of university that have collaborated with us for the project. Uh, of course, the scientific committee lead by Daniela Pistoia, and uh, Professor Farina, Professor Vincentelli, Nino Amoroso, and Andrea Pompili. Uh, all the members of the editorial committee, but above all, Mr. Andrea De Martino and Mr. Massimo Nulli. Uh, of course, let me thanks above all, all our colleagues from uh, Electronica Rome, GmbH and Cyphergate, who works intensively in the project. So later, Daniela Pistoia, Electronica Chief Scientist, will demonstrate the EMSO and explain all the characteristics and the possibility for, for all of you to participate in the project. So many thanks to the attendees. Thank you. Ms. Benini, thank you very much for your introduction. Okay, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this event. Uh, I'm here now to let you enter deeply in the platform. Uh, but firstly, I would like to share with you the passion that moved uh, us to start and boost uh, the project of uh, Emsopedia. As a global player in the performance of aerospace and defense, Electronica is every day playing a crowded, in a crowded business environment, which, uh, apart uh, uh, from the natural competition, continuously generates new ideas, diversifies applications, exploit technologies in conventional and unconventional ways and apply knowledge. And because we work in a, such a wide and challenging uh, discipline, it would be easy to say that we are focused on innovation. Of course, we are focused on innovation, but we believe that there's no innovation without a vision. Or in other words, innovation is the practical realization of a vision. And uh, it's this vision that is guiding us in imagining the future and anticipate the trends in this diversified, unpredictable and digitalized new world. In pursuing this vision uh, since the last decade, uh, we decided to definitely surf the extended applications of electromagnetic spectrum, the natural resource in which, from which, and through which all military, military supported and asymmetric missions are performed, and that has become essential to the economic prosperity of, of the nations and the civilian life. The novel discipline named the electromagnetic spectrum operations is content, constantly grow, growing, aiming at identifying, organizing, and disseminating concepts of operations user requirements, doctrines, resources, material and technologies, enabling the use and exploitation of the electromagnetic spectrum in peacetime 
crisis and conflict. Given the rapid evolving of the user requirements, the large variety of applications, and the continuous improvement, improvement in technology, we decided to create this project with the clear and sole intent of invite institutions, industries, academia, journalists, and any individuals which are somehow involved in the discipline to share knowledge in a digital way. This project, Ensopedia, therefore, arises from this dream. While entering in the platform, let me give you some uh, key indicators. Uh, as a glossary, we have identified uh, 150 titles, just to start, or lemmas, as the first base of the knowledge of uh, EMSO. They are keywords in a continuously growing taxonomy, which have a distinctive characteristics. They have been organized in a relation tree that can be navigated by the reader inside the platform. And I will show you some example. There's no other example on, uh, of, uh, of this in the web. The first re release of Ensopedia that would be online in the next hours is filled with the 100 lemmas written by our contributors. Let me personally thank all the 50 contributors that up to now have given their support to the project for free. As for the purpose of this project, they belong to various institutions, academia, industries, or they are journalists and individuals from five nations. They have one thing in common, passion for the spectrum. This is the true originality and strength of the project, as well as its open nature to qualify the counterparts that can make it grow even more in the future. It is a collective work that has only the scientific objective of increasing knowledge on this area uh, of competence. No commercial or marketing purposes, as our CEO Domitila Benigni has just stressed in the keynote speech. As I said in this first release, the project includes the first 100 most significant entries concerning EMSO knowledge. Obviously, no classified or confidential information are included, nor military, nor industrial. It is a project born for the pure love of knowledge and science. We have a great ambition on the possibility of growth and expansion in the non-strictly military sphere as well. More than 500 pages have been already written and are the current content of the platform. If we put together all the contents, much more than a standard book on the subject is obtained. Another key characteristic of the project is that it's an open project. The only requirement is represented by scientific and expert contributions that can enrich its value. So now I have the honor to show you the Ensopedia with a live navigation. So let me share the video. Okay. You are sharing. Okay. 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 So this is the the home page of the of the platform. As you see, there is a big big bar that uh, allows um, the, the, uh, the user to explore the Ensopedia. Now, uh, let me introduce uh, the first uh, box, which is mission and values. 
in which uh, uh, there is a summary of the of the main concepts that we have shared with you in this uh, brief presentation. Uh, it's uh, and at the end of this uh, of this uh, abstract, there are the words of our president CEO in that uh, celebrating 70 years uh, of uh, uh, the anniversary of Electronica share to the community this gift. So. Let me go back to the home page and show you that uh, uh, we can navigate. Uh, okay, that we can navigate in uh, different ways uh, uh, the, the platform. Uh, so we can uh, navigate by search and we can navigate by glossary. And we can browse by category. So uh, the first entry is uh, uh, the, the, the mother word is electromagnetic spectrum operation. Is um, uh, on the on the platform you can see the abstract of each lemma, and then you go to the to the lemma to the to the article entry, and. Uh, uh, Sorry, but there are some delays in uh, sharing. Okay. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the first example. So thanks to Brigadier General Giuseppe Sgamba that uh, has shared uh, his passion for uh, ele electromagnetic spectrum operation to write this uh, uh, main article. Uh, which is uh, which enters in the uh, for, for this main discipline of electromagnetic spectrum operation, which are electronic warfare, information operations, cyber electromagnetic activity, spectrum operations, electronic warfare, which is uh, the combat discipline of ENSO. We can enter here by the hyperlink. Okay. Okay. So the this lemma, uh, electronic warfare, also known as electromagnetic warfare, following the most modern uh, lexicon uh, in the field, has been written by uh, Nino Amoroso, which was formerly director at Northrop Grumman, and uh, today is a junction governor at uh, uh, the Association of All Crows. And together with other uh, friends from the Crows, um, he, he decided to share with us uh, this um, uh, this lemma. And um, uh, again, you see what are the um, what is what is the structure of the lemma? It's full of pictures that are uh, uh, um, innovative and original by themselves. You can study and you can reach the other lemmas by clicking on the um, on the hyperlink. I want you to show also the taxonomy. Uh, just wait a few seconds. Okay. So uh, if we enter on on one lemma, for example, the electromagnetic spectrum operations, the first one. We can see that uh, sorry, just quarter, just a moment. Okay. Okay, so you see here the example of the taxonomy. So we are um, in this in this section of the page. You can see the position of the lemma in the tree. So of course, electronic warfare is one of the most populated and uh, full of branches and voices. You see in this uh, in this example that we see 
that are dependent um, lemmas from electronic warfare are uh, uh, simulation, electronic protection, uh, space EW, net centric EW, collaborative, cognitive EW, even uh, this, um, um, these articles are very innovative. For example, there is also agnostic electronic warfare, which has been written by our friend Tom, by himself, and uh, in the um, uh, and, the, and the traditional um, um, traditional discipline of electronic warfare, electronic attack, uh, electronic support, uh, and uh, um, defensive electronic attack and offensive electronic attack. Of course, there is a focus in the specialized the command and control, and every and every title can be reached. Uh, in, a, in a, um, navigating this tree. Uh, as you see, for example, in the radar electronic attack, you can see a lot of uh, information about all the techniques that are related to this kind of uh, uh, activations. So, uh, for example, if you want to enter uh, from here, uh, electronic attack, for example. Okay, we can see another example of the lemma in which there are also some scientific sharing in the probability, for example, that a platform can survive with or without electronic warfare in a challenging environment. So it's full of this uh, um, knowledge that you cannot find in any other uh, place uh, in the web. So it was one of the requirements that we have given to our contributors. Um, another, uh, we can reach again the home page and enter, for example, here to the bar navigation warfare. And you see that uh, there are some suggestions, of course, uh, uh, navigation warfare, you see the first line. And uh, uh, Dave Adami, which is another friend from uh, Old Crows, has uh, written this, uh, this page uh, and shared with us what are the most uh, uh, recent uh, achievements uh, challenges and issues in this, uh, uh, in, in this navigation warfare, which is becoming a discipline by its own. Uh, of course, we can enter through uh, other part of, uh, of the page. For example, new on, on Encyclopedia, we can enter in uh, communication intelligence, for example, here. Okay, and uh, similar, you can find uh, a lot of, uh, you see, the, oh, every, every article is not, uh, uh, is not just the definition. There are a lot of, uh, and here, Pierre Chaltiel has, has written for us uh, this, uh, this lemma. So we have, as you see, contribution from uh, uh, many places of the world and from individuals, academias, and so forth. Uh, another uh, um, another way to, to navigate is, I said, through the category, and uh, for example, here, draws by category, and uh, we can enter in, uh, for example, uh, cyber electromagnetic activities, CIMA, which is uh, uh, written by uh, Andrea Pumpili, which is also part of the scientific committee, and uh, describes how uh, electronic warfare and cyber warfare are two sides of the same coin and uh, are converging, maintaining their uh, peculiarity at the same time. So uh, let me go back to the home and uh, introduce to you the committees. Here it is. Okay, so scientific committee, 
Uh, we, uh, I, I'm honored to have the Professor San Giovanni Vincentelli, uh, Mino Amoroso, uh, Alfonso Farina, uh, Professor Fellow IEEE, IET, uh, and so forth, and uh, Andrea Pompili, Chief Scientist Officer at Cyber Gate, but uh, a great personality in the world of cyber. And uh, uh, there is also here the list of uh, people that helped us uh, in the uh, in the re reviewing the uh, all the uh, the articles that have been written a very huge uh, job. So these are the people that uh, belongs to the uh, to this committee. And uh, uh, finally, uh, and uh, thanks to them, thanks to them, many, many thanks to them. I'm going to show you. Uh, sorry, I, I made a, a mistake uh, he, here. The complete list of contributors. We have uh, 50 plus contributors. And uh, you see, they belong uh, to armed forces, to industries, to academia. Uh, Professor De Maio from uh, University of Naples, uh, uh, Alfonso Farina, of course, uh, people from uh, uh, AOC, uh, passion for, for the electromagnetic spectrum. Our colleagues uh, uh, Massimo Sciotti from uh, Electronica GmbH, uh, General Gamba. I don't want to mention everyone or to forget every, anyone, but uh, this is a big family and a big team. And uh, we hope that um, uh, this opera will grow in the, in the next days and in the future. Uh, we, everyone can be involved. Uh, but must be um, accepted, as we say, by the scientific committee. So there will be um, um, a form to, to be filled and uh, a CV to be sent. Uh, and then uh, as for uh, um, the lemmas or the kind of contribution that uh, anyone can want to, to give. Uh, and then uh, the, the two boards, the scientific committee and the editorial board will uh, arrange the contribution. So I think it's all for, for, for the moment. Uh, please navigate uh, as soon as the, uh, the platform will be online in a few hours, uh, I think. And uh, thank you for your attention. Ms. Pistoia, thank you very much for your presentation. I'd now like to invite questions from the floor. Uh, we only have a limited amount of time, but we will endeavour to answer as many of these as possible. Uh, could I ask anyone who is sending in a question, please to mention who you'd like me to address the question to, uh, or if it's not one specific person, um, we'll address the questions to the entire panel. We've already had a couple of questions that have come in during our presentations. Um, and I'd like to start with the question that we've got from uh, Mr. Pietro Batacci, uh, who is from the Revista Italiana Difesa. And he has a question for Ms. Pistoia. And it is, uh, in what terms do we talk about the convergence between cyber and the use of the electromagnetic spectrum? Okay, so thank you very much, Tom, and thank you for, for the question. Um, it's uh, in the in the context of in in the context of electromagnetic spectrum operation, the convergence of uh, electronic warfare and uh, cyber warfare uh, is the most advanced discipline, maybe, uh, which uh, uh, are converging thanks to the spectrum. So this means that the spectrum is the way, is the entry, is the is an entry way for cyber and uh, represents uh, uh, the, the growing capability of electronic warfare to uh, uh, growing from the physical layer, which is the spectrum, to the cognitive layer, which is the information. So through the cyber electromagnetic activity, 
we can uh, uh, imagine scenarios uh, in which uh, um, through the electromagnetic spectrum and using uh, advanced uh, countermeasures, we can uh, manipulate uh, not only the spectrum as, as conventional electronic warfare, but also the intensity of the message of the information up to um, uh, reaching and uh, um, uh, activating uh, um, effects in the, uh, at the level of the processing of the target. So there is a lot of research in this field. There are some uh, uh, already obtained results, uh, very covert, uh, not very uh, common to find information about that, but uh, scenarios that can be imagined are very amazing and interesting at the same time. Thank you very much, Daniela. We have a, another question here, and um, that is uh, from Mr. Luca Peruzzi. And this is a question for Ms. Benini. Uh, and Luca would like to ask, is the collaboration open to other companies? Okay, so um, before going into the question, I have to apologize because I forgot to thank you uh, two important people in the project. One is Admiral Bisceglie, director of OCCAR, and the other one, let me uh, express really my warmest uh, regards and thank you to Anna Colavita, our media uh, director, because she works hard and with the enthusiasm and uh, with a real commitment uh, and uh, she's one of the leading of this uh, of this success so now i come to the to the question and thank you to uh, to luca uh, so of course the um, the tool is open so absolutely yes uh, of course uh, we have to uh, protect some uh, information so of course we cannot disclose some information but the tool uh, remain a scientific tool so of course any contribution are uh, more than welcome Thomas here thank you very much um, a few more questions that we've had coming in um, we have a, a question here from an Andreas Lichtenberg and uh, Andreas would like to know, are contributions checked before they are posted online? Uh, and I'd address that to the whole panel, I think. Uh, of course, yes. Uh, we have the two uh, committee. So there is the scientific committee and the editorial committee. So, of course, all the information. Uh, let me say this is a name Sopedia, but it's not like a Wikipedia. So all the contributors must be sent to the uh, two committees that will evaluate and they will uh, let maybe if uh, if there is a case uh, change something or exchange uh, some uh, feedback about uh, all the information i don't know if daniela want to uh, uh, add something else Um, yes, uh, you're right, Domitilla. So uh, there is a form in the in the home page, uh, reachable in the home page, that uh, uh, through which uh, any uh, individual that uh, uh, aim to contribute so will uh, write uh, the details uh, of uh, the request, and then the scientific committee will evaluate and uh, agree on the content uh, that will be reviewed and so and so forth this is to protect uh, in some way the, the the goal of the of the opera that is uh, a purely scientific uh, no um, offense let me say uh, to any uh, behavior, no political uh, message or something like that. Only technology, uh, concept of operations, 
uh, even uh, uh, vision for future application of uh, spectrum uh, in the military and non-military application. So we are, uh, of course, it is wide open, this, uh, this opera, this uh, platform, but uh, uh, of course, the content has to be, uh, uh, the level of content has to be checked and approved. Daniela, thank you very much. Um, I noticed that uh, General Scamber was raising his hand, I think, at one point there. Uh, General, something that you'd like to add, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I think uh, it's also very important that we all understand, as uh, um, uh, was already said by uh, Mrs. Benigni, that is not uh, a Wikipedia type of thing. It's something that needs to be credited and has to be credible. So uh, I think it's very important that somebody eventually can put a blue stamp on what is the information. It is very important also for the uh, full community that those informations are in somehow, I don't want to call it exactly certificated, but in somehow they are credible. You know, internet as an open source, you can find basically everything, but you got no attribution for what it is in there. Instead, I think that a tool uh, like this, uh, which is uh, uh, also has uh, some uh, scientific character, needs to be certified. It needs to have some kind of uh, control and oversight. So uh, I welcome uh, the fact that it's not completely open. I think uh, everybody should be welcome to write uh, articles, idea, definition, to propose uh, um, projects that has to do uh, with the electronic magnetic spectrum. But as I said again, it should be controlled. That is uh, the, uh, the value of this tool as well. And it's something that it's credible. It's not just uh, a, a, a bunch of information together. And um, yeah, that is just my two cents on the, uh, on the question that was uh, raised by the, uh, by the uh, audience. And besides, sorry, I mentioned the Chapman House rule, but um, you know, um, flexibility is the uh, key capability of the air power. So I'll take it back. Uh, I can take also attribution. Okay, thank you. General Scamba, thank you very much. Um, while we've been chatting, we've had um, a few more questions. We've also had a few more comments from people. Um, this from uh, uh, Mr. Daniel uh, Dimitrov, who's been joining us, and he would like to say, happy 70th anniversary. Uh, thank you for the great initiative. I'm sure this project will grow with time and will be of use to all experts in the MSO field. And uh, also from Mr. Alfonso Farina, he reminds us that um, the origin of the word spectrum actually comes from the Latin. Uh, and it was introduced by Mr. Isaac Newton in 1656. And he reminds us that Mr. Newton was uh, actually writing and working during another uh, terrible epoch um, of the Great Plague, I believe it was, or the Black Death, one of the two. And of course, this is sadly very apt for us uh, during these times of COVID, but he would like to wish us uh, a very good event and wish us the best of luck with uh, this MSOpedia. Uh, we've also got another question that's just come in um, from a Mr. Stefano Bioppi, and uh, he would like to ask, is there any goal to offer a common operative perspective on MSO to NATO Armed Forces allies and partners? And once again, I think um, we'll, we'll address that to all of the panel. Uh, so, as we said, the, the, the tool is uh, open to everybody. So, uh, uh, if uh, uh, having a common uh, perspective uh, uh, would be uh, useful and also uh, uh, agreed by NATO or by, by NATO Armed Force, uh, of course, yes. I don't know if uh, General Gamba <laughs> is, is in his field. I think uh, whenever we're talking about interoperability, people uh, are not interoperable just uh, by technical means. They are interoperable also by common language, common understanding. So I think very much here it comes, the Insopedia is a tool also for interoperability. We may be, as I said, uh, 
uh, all on the same uh, uh, sheet of music by reading common definitions and understanding in a common language, common concepts. And then eventually, as I said, we can discuss and we can eventually uh, move forward. But the first understand is to shape comprehension of the, a problem, is to shape comprehension of uh, a perception. So I think that this tool very much uh, in somehow provide this kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of feedback. So, as I said, I welcome. I, uh, I've been uh, in uh, uh, Air Force uh, since 40 years now, and on my old days, you know, it was very difficult to talk the same language about uh, same issues. And in NATO, it's uh, really uh, something that we work in and we're struggling with day by day. It's uh, uh, very important for us uh, to have all the uh, 30 nations on the same understanding. Interoperability, interoperability I'm sorry, goes also uh, by this uh, uh, common understanding and common language. So it goes without saying it's, it's, it's just a, a good start point to build up uh, interoperability in the uh, electronic magnetic environment community, advocates and uh, uh, professionals. I hope that answered the question. Thank you all very much. Uh, Daniela, anything that you'd like to ask on that? Uh, to respond, rather? Yes, we have, uh, uh, we are so open, let me say, to, to also to ideas to improve the platforms, adding new sections, for example. We already have in mind some, uh, some improvement, for example, opening a section of uh, um, best readings on the uh, best books or best readings on particular subjects, for example, or uh, open uh, uh, um, debates, online debates on some uh, subjects and titles. So I think that uh, um, it is uh, open not only to the information related to the topics, but also is open to new ideas to grow as a platform in the sense that we uh, have stressed until now uh, to be a, a scientific platform to share knowledge, ideas, trends, and uh, uh, create uh, or, or reinforce the community of uh, electromagnetic spectrum uh, warriors, let me say. In, uh... Thank you all very much. Um, we have another question here from a uh, Mr. Riccardo Ferretti, and he would like to ask, can MSOpedia be also considered as a forum where to debate electronic warfare and doctrinal topics. Uh, once again, I think we'll um, we'll farm that one out to all of you. Uh, so um, please do share your thoughts with us. Uh, yes, I think it can grow in this sense. Uh, we have uh, discussed from uh, technology, let me say, point of view, how to include also a space uh, in the platform that could be uh, that could host uh, forums. Of course, also uh, these forums has to be uh, uh, credible, uh, so the, the, the participants has to be uh, trusted, uh, so there would be a procedure to enter in the forum and exchange uh, uh, information or opinions and so forth. So it's part of the, of the upgrade, uh, continuous upgrade that uh, we hope uh, the platform will have. Would anyone else like to uh, add anything? Just one point uh, I would like to touch. Um, as, a, as, a, as I said very quickly in, uh, in, in my introduction, um, the electromagnetic spectrum is not only uh, is, is a dual use uh, resource. So even if it has been mili militarized since the beginning, 
it has a big importance in the economic prosperity of the nations and in our daily life. So um, we soon will add a section uh, that we will call unconventional electromagnetic spectrum operations, in which we will, we will include um, all the um, use of the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, even uh, uh, potential. Uh, that, uh, introduced in our discipline like health or um, other in medicine and so forth. So uh, there will be a dedicated section for the dual use of the spectrum. Daniela, thank you very much. Uh, we have a, another question uh, here, which is um, I know, forgive me, this is one we've already tackled. Um, so with that in mind, um, I think we can leave things there for now for, for the Q&A. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, obviously, all of our speakers for their superb responses. I, we had a very nice array of different questions exploring a wide array of topics, all relevant to the encyclopedia. So I'd like to thank all of our, uh, not only all our contributors, but all of our audience for those questions. Um, and to everybody who's joined us today, uh, in particular, our distinguished speakers. And please also don't forget that from today, you can visit the Emsopedia at www.emsopedia.org. Uh, you can see it there in all of its glory. You can explore it. We've had a superb introduction from Daniela showing us how we can navigate and uh, explore that in a little more detail. And please do feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions with the company. We would, of course, love to hear from you. Uh, so with that in mind, thank you all once again for joining us. Do please keep safe and stay well in these difficult times. And thanks again. Thank you very much, Tom. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe.